All right, let's get to some good news. Let's get to some fucking good news. Huh? This is exciting. Goodbye to Neera Tandon. She's donezo. Out of here. See you later. Sayonara. Neera Tandon will not be the director of the OMB. Couldn't get the confirmation. Couldn't get enough votes to get confirmed. Fuck yeah. If you're unfamiliar with the uh, the the golden sociopath that is Neera Tandon, uh, some of her policies, I mean, so I, I made, I made a tweet, uh, a couple months, uh, maybe a month or two ago about Neera Tandon. Uh, and I called her the brown face of imperialism. Uh, she's basically imperialism uh, in, in brown face, some, something along those lines. And, you know, a few, a few people that follow me on Twitter on a regular basis were like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because they know who the fuck she is, and they're not falling for the center of American progress, this fucking neoliberal think tank uh, that's out to monger war and kill social programs, right? Uh, and and ensure that the American working class uh, never has a seat at the negotiating table, is not properly taken care of, but the corporate oligarchs are. So... They came at me and they fucking were like, look at all the, you're fucking wrong. You're listening to the propaganda. You're a fucking more, you're sexist and you're racist. Wait, you're also Indian. You're also an Indian guy. Fuck, we can't call you racist, but we can call you sexist a couple times. Oh shit. Did you, did you support Tulsi Gabbard and Nina Turner? Ah, oh, fuck shit. But yeah. Wrong women. They have, they're they're sexist women that were against the women that were approved by the establishment. So you're sexist and your penis. We should put your penis in a guillotine, buddy. Just the tip should be in a guillotine. That's that's the kind of reactions I got. And they sent me links to the Center of American Progress, and and I checked out one or two of them, and they were just insane neoliberal propaganda, right? Like. One of the things was Medicare choice. That's what it was. And it was basically like, no, we'll pit Medicare for all against uh, corporate insurance and see which one comes out on top. We'll give the American people some choice. But if you're going to run propaganda against Medicare for all and scare people into choosing the more expensive fucking uh, corporate insurance, then that's not giving it a fair shot. Besides, healthcare is a human right and everybody should deserve to have health care. Everybody should just be taken care of. It's as simple as that. It doesn't need to be as complicated as the center of American progress and every fucking neoliberal douchebag tries to make it. Here's the thing with Nira. She withdrew, is what they say. Uh, this is the appropriate way to say withdraw. Uh, she withdrew her name from consideration from the Office of Budget and Management, which if she would have been in there for as much of a warmonger as she is... Uh, I'm calling her a warmonger to be polite because she doesn't like to be called a war hawk. As much of a sociopathic warmonger as she is, uh, she would have just, the budgets would have all been to, to bomb other countries and steal their oil. And that's how we fund social programs. The Biden administration, uh, or, or she came out and basically said she doesn't see a path forward. There's no path forward. That's what she said. Really, what she was hoping for is those Clinton ties would just automatically get her the votes, right? She has ties to the Clinton administration, and the Democrats are basically the, the, the party of Clinton. Hillary Clinton is the queen of all Yas queens, right? Not the junior Yas queen that Nancy Pelosi is. Uh, she thought that would take her to the top. It did not. It failed. You had Biden coming out, the administration came out and made a statement saying that they have the utmost respect for her record of accomplishments. Again, her record is anti-Medicare for all, pit, trying to say that corporate insurance should be pit against Medicare for all and let the American people make their choice. We already did. 72% of Americans want Medicare for all. That's a Fox News poll. That's a conservative poll. That's a far right wing poll. We already told you what we want. We don't want Medicare choice. We don't want this bullshit Pete Buttigieg neoliberal think tank healthcare idea. That's not what we want. 
the leaked emails and people are like, oh, well, she apologized for this. Uh, kind of. Right. She wants to steal oil from Libya to fund social programs. That's how that's how she wants to. Oh, we, we're in a deficit. They have oil. We manifest destiny, our oil. That's what she is. She punched Fai Shakir, or is that how you say his name? I, I apologize if I butchered his name, but he was the campaign manager. I believe the campaign manager to, to Bernie's campaign. And uh, when he worked for Think Progress, which which was uh, the center of American Progress's newspaper, they were they were funded by the Center of American Progress. Uh, he questioned her about Hillary's um, uh, pro war. She she was for the Iraq War, so she questioned her about uh, you know being pro war. And after the interview, she punched him in the chest. So that's you, you remember how we were talking about how how for four years we talked about how uh, Trump attacks the press and oh he's attacking the press he's not good for free press he's not this Lee punched a journalist do you think that's good for free press then she attacked Bernie and you know and I I find it very comical that Bernie is the one that called her and let her know that she ain't in. And then she fucking had to bail out. That's awesome to me. Because fuck you. She's one of those people that, like, embarrasses my ethnicity. Now, the parties, both the Democratic Party, the the, op the opposition in the Democratic Party, you know, you had uh, uh, good, good, good boy, uh, uh, what, what are they called? Dixiecrats like Joe Manchin, uh, who said that the, that she's too problematic. You had a bunch of Republicans uh, saying she was too problematic. I think they were waiting on like an Alaskan senator as the swing vote for Neera Tandon. Uh, and it became more and more evident that the delays were uh, leading more to no. But they said, well, it's her mean tweets. She has very problematic tweets. She had to delete a thousand tweets, by the way. I'm not dismissing this as uh, as an issue, right? It is an issue. It shows It shows what kind of person she is. Uh, she's, she's a horrible fucking sociopathic maniac is kind of what it shows us that she is. But the mean tweets weren't the be all end all. They were a contributing factor, but it's the fact that she has horrific policies and is a warmonger. But the narrative became all about the tweets. So anytime anybody criticized her and brought up her record and brought up what she, uh, what the center of American progress actually stood for. This anti-work, anti-worker, union busting, anti-Medicare for all, pro-war think tank that uses the word progress to diminish what progress means. If you brought that up, oh, you're just this is just about the mean tweets. Oh, you're just mean. That's that's all. You, you, oh, you're you're such a snowflake that you can't handle the tweets. That's what the narrative became about, because that's what the leadership of the parties made it about. They all made it about the fucking tweets. Also, you had to delete a thousand of them. A thousand fucking tweets got deleted. <laughs> Dude, Kevin Hart didn't even have to delete that many tweets. Like, do you know how do you know how fucking sociopathic you have to be? Do you know how shitty of a human being you have to be to have to delete a thousand fucking tweets? That's a lot. But her, but her tweets were just a reflection of what she believed in anyway. And she never really apologized, right? There's claims that she apologized for them, but really her apologies were this, right? They were basically the equivalent of, I'm sorry you feel that way. You guys ever hear that apology before? My ex-wife used to give me that apology all the time when she would like do horrific shit or say horrific shit and I would get upset about it. Uh, and she would realize that what she said wasn't, you know, wasn't cool. Wasn't okay. Uh, it crossed the boundary for me. Uh, and, and she would say, well, I'm sorry you feel that way. And that's not a real fucking apology. That's not you taking responsibility for what you said. I'm sorry you feel that way is not a real fucking apology. And that's what that's what her apology basically was. I'm sorry that the Republicans and the Democrats were offended at my mean tweets. OK. I know Hillary Clinton. OK. 
they are saying that they're going to give her a um, a seat somewhere uh, that doesn't require a, a Senate nomination, right? Uh, <laughs> I guess it's the equivalent of getting her an internship. <laughs> so she's not qualified for a job uh, where she needs to be confirmed through some kind of a democratic process. But they're like, fuck it. We'll go around them and we'll get her into the fucking office. We'll get her in there. We need to have her whisper that she need that to, in, into Joe Biden's ears that he needs to go and do more wars. Fuck it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. I don't know what they're going to have her be, uh, but... You know, I hope that even that fucking backfires on them. And if they do put Neera Tandon uh, and, and, and they just put her in a position that doesn't need Senate confirmation. Do you really think that the Democrats are going to have an approval rating? For 20, I mean, this is how you lose 2022. If you give a shit about the 2022 elections. Yeah, you're setting yourself up to essentially lose the House. And then, I mean, it kind of works out good for the Democrats because then. Uh, if something happens and Kamala Harris becomes president, uh, Kamala Harris will then have a, 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 an excuse to say, well, the mean Republicans aren't letting me do anything nice for the people. It's all because of the mean Republicans, you guys. No, it's because you're an asshole. And you don't actually give a shit about human beings. And your party doesn't give a shit about human beings. They care about profit more than they care about anything else. They want to use their power as a leverage to profit. That's all you give a shit about. Your diversity, your fucking rainbow smokescreen isn't going to work anymore. Not when you're trying to advocate for near a tandem more than you're more than you're advocating for shit that you promise, like increasing the minimum wage to $15 an hour and the $2,000 motherfucking dollar checks that we were promised. And working out a fucking COVID relief bill and helping out small businesses and ensuring that vaccines go out there to people. All the shit that you fucking promised, you didn't fucking do. What did you focus on instead in the first fucking 40 days? You focused on starting a, a, a bombing Syria and trying to get Neera Tandon as the director of off the Office of Management of Budgets so that you could bomb other countries. And have the money for it. All right, before we get to our last uh, last segment, I want to look at some comments. Aram, good to see you, buddy. Good to thank you for joining in. Tandon wants in. Yeah, I think she definitely wants to be uh, in the administration. I think she was expecting a spot in the administration in 2016. And when Hillary didn't win, you know, that shattered her fucking dreams. Uh, so she just became a troll on Twitter. Uh, the entire narrative around the Tandon nomination was an embarrassment. The worst part was uh, the pronouncement that progressives were disappointed at the air idea of Tandon not being confirmed. I, I as someone that c considers them to be pretty pro or con considers themselves to be pretty progressive, nah, I'm not disappointed. I'm excited. My girl, my my girlfriend even mentioned that to me last night. We were we were uh, we were we were getting ready to go to bed, and she was like, "Hey, I saw that lady you fucking hate didn't get confirmed." And I was like, "Yeah, is that awesome?" And then we high fived. It was great. Uh, Alaskan Senator Lisa Murkowski said that nobody from the White House ever asked her how she was going to vote uh, prior to Neera Tandon withdrawing her name for consideration. Oh, so, so that was also a bunch of bullshit, huh? <laughs> We're waiting on the swing vote of the Alaskan Senator, but nobody's talked to the Alaskan Senator. We believe that she's going to be a swing. So we're going to try to swing her in our direction, but we're not though. We're just going to hope that she knows what's good for her. So who knows if Tandon felt maybe another Democrat was going to be voting. No, I, I think a bunch of people were going to really vote. No. I don't think she really, I, I, she's not very liked. She She's an unlikable person. That's just who she is. Uh, let's see. So if, uh, so who knows if, the, if the, yeah, uh, or need one more Republican. Uh, besides Joe Manchin might be voting no, so Tandon might, uh, Tandon might need one more Republican. Um, I don't even think the Republicans wanted to vote for her. The Republicans hated her even more. And again, all they did was quote quote her fucking treat, tweets instead of pointing out how horrific she is as a as a person. 
Uh, there's some celebration happening on uh, on Rockman. Hashtag Tandon rejected. Uh, she isn't going anywhere. Celebrate she was rejected. Watch how quick she gets hired uh, at the White House anyway. Yeah, I hope I I don't really know what position she can get. Like I maybe an advisory position. Like she can be an advisor to the president. Is that I I don't know if that requires uh, Senate confirmation either. That I'm I'm just not familiar with what is and what doesn't need Senate confirmation. Um, I know if she wants to be like. Uh, someone that deals with foreign policy, she's going to need to get confirmed if she wants to be an ambassador of some kind, which she should not be, by the way. I'm not saying that she should be. Just retreated behind the curtain with Hillary. Yeah, I think I think that's what she's doing. Uh, there, There's going to be I mean, this was like John Bolton, right? Like the second John Bolton was uh, fired or quit or whatever the fuck he did from the Trump administration. I was like, it's great that he's gone. But you know he's going to do some other shady shit. Like, he's not in the public light anymore, so we can't keep tabs on him, and we can't call him out on his bullshit. But you know he's going to do some weird shady shit. And then he put out a book, uh, which was also insane. And I had a bunch of people, like, defending John Bolton to me when I when I addressed that fact. And it's the same thing. It's like, people are going to defend Neera Tandon to me. And I, and I don't care, because you're wrong. Like that, if you're defending Neera Tandon, you're fucking wrong. Who do you think is de facto president? Uh, it isn't Biden. He's a brain dead actor. <laughs> uh, I I said this before. I think Biden is is going to be as similar to Reagan, and I think the intelligence community uh, and the war profiteers are really going to be the ones that are in charge during this administration. Um, and and you're gonna and and now that January sixth happened. They're going to use that as a, a, a touchstone to increase surveillance uh, and basically have people turn their rights over to the Democratic Party so that they can create a dystopia. Uh, that's really where we're going. Uh, this is going to be crypto fascism rather than uh, blatant in your face fascism. Uh, Fred, you say we must not forget Nita advocating for the theocracies and Netanyahu in D.C. after cap donations. Oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Uh, thank you for the reminder. I do. I, I, I forgot about that. Uh, I wonder why so ma how many of Nira's tweets uh, had Hillary typing the messages. She has a problem with emails everywhere she goes. Uh, wouldn't doubt if she was getting direct quotes and handing the phone to Hillary with, with Nira logged on. <laughs> That is that is very funny. I'm seconding Sarah there. Very funny stuff. Uh, don't worry. I'm I'm just a conspiracy theorist, not meant to be taken seriously in any way. Uh, about uh, especially about corporate media, the election, the voting system, uh, and not being sure about the vaccine. Uh, you know, there the uh, in terms of the vaccine, I I know there's a lot of problems with it, um, and, and a lot of people. My my concern is trusting the corporations themselves. Uh, you know, uh, like Pfizer specifically, it, it's tough to, 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 to trust them because of, uh, their torrid past, let's call it. Um, but from, from what I hear from more, more of my science minded friends, uh, the MRNA vaccine should, it, it should be better than, than just a traditional vaccine, but we'll see all this is kind of new territory. We have no idea if we're going to need booster shots in six months if we're going to need booster shots in a year or how they're going to roll this out. But regardless, uh, if the vaccine is going to succeed in any way, shape or form, you can't charge money for it. So Pfizer really wants to continue down in, in, in developing this vaccine, in bettering the vaccine and making it good uh, and safe for everybody and building trust. You can't charge a profit for it. You can't. You're, you're just going to have to take it as a loss, you know. And you're and you're Pfizer. You you're a multi-billion dollar fucking pharmaceutical company. Do you really need to make money right now off of the suffering of the world? If you do, you're a bag of cunts and nobody's gonna trust you ever again. And you're just gonna fuel more of these conspiracy theories over and over again. And 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 as the government's like, trust the vaccines, no one's gonna fucking trust it because you you're you're dealing with a bag of cunts that are they're trying to turn a profit off of people's suffering. And Ain't nobody going to be able to fucking rationalize that. Uh, uh, I see you can still see my deleted comments. Oh, 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 I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's because um, 
I, I see what happened. I see what happened. A, a, a Ram is talking about a little glitch on YouTube uh, where he put up a comment, and I think it might have not been the full comment. Uh, so he deleted it, but it's still registered because I'm using a I'm using an a, 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 a streaming program called Streamyard, and that that probably still registers all of the deleted comments. So I still I see you can still see my deleted comments. It's, yeah, yeah, okay. I I get what was going on. Uh, cool. That that clears that clears that clears up that string of stuff. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you enjoyed this content, uh, please make sure that you hit the like button, hit the share button, and make sure you're subscribed to my channel, whether it's on Rockfin, YouTube, or Facebook. Especially Facebook and YouTube, they often uncensor pe uh, un unsubscribe people and they censor this content. So if you want to keep up to date, make sure you're subscribed. Hit that bell button so you get notifications of when I'm putting up new videos and when I am going live. I usually go live uh, on uh, Fridays and on Mondays. Uh, and if you want more information about a, a bunch of the other stuff that I do, uh, whether it's my Forkful of Noodles podcast, the Taboo Table Talk interview podcast, or the Road Reflections live streams, uh, make sure you go to my website, krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A.com. There you'll find past episodes of, uh, of various shows that I, uh, that I do, as well as information about when I'll be performing live virtual comedy shows the forkful of noodles live virtual comedy shows uh the dates and tickets will be available directly on my website but if you're also on financial stable ground you can help contribute to the show financially by making a one-time donation or becoming a sustaining member which gets you free tickets and bonus content and go to krishmohanhaha.com slash donate to to make any kind of financial contributions but if you can't it's not a necessity most of my stuff is is available for free and for everybody to enjoy. So again, go to krishmohanhaha.com. It's K-R-I-S-H-M-O-H-A-N-H-A-H-A. -H 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 -A, and I hope to see you at the next video.